Hello and welcome to Celebrity Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. In the spotlight tonight are Marcus Brigstock, a brilliant radio comedian. His specialist subject, Pink Floyd. Vic Hope, Radio 1 DJ and host of I'm a Celebrity, The Daily Drop. She will be answering questions on giraffes. Bryony Mae Williams, who presents Channel 4's Food Unwrapped. Her subject, boy bands of the 90s and the noughties. And Siobhan McSweeney, famous for her role as Sister Michael in the sitcom Derry Girls. Her specialist subject, Gene Wilder. <laughs> Four celebrities who have spent years building up their reputations and they're now putting it all at risk in the name of charity. And, of course, the glory of perhaps becoming a celebrity mastermind. The rules are very simple. They get 90 seconds of questions on their specialist subject, two minutes on general knowledge. So, let us ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is? Marcus Brigstock. Your occupation? Comedian. Your chosen charity? Tommy's. And your chosen subject? Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, the influential British rock band formed in 1965. Here we go. Although Pink Floyd were formed in London, three of its members, Sid Barrett, Roger Waters and David Gilmour, had all grown up in another English city. Which one? Cambridge. Yep. In which part did Pink Floyd play both a 1968 free concert and a landmark 2005 reunion performance? The earlier show was described by John Peel as the best outdoor event I've ever been to. Hyde Park. Yep. Which session singer improvised the wordless vocal performance on the song The Great Gig in the Sky? She received a co-writing credit for it more than 30 years later. Claire Torrey. Correct. Pink Floyd concerts became known for the presence of large inflatables. An early one of these appeared from a lake during their headline show at the Garden Party in Crystal Palace in 1971. It took the form of what creature? An octopus. Yep. The title of one of the band's albums was inspired by a headline in London's Evening Standard about a woman who'd been fitted with a plutonium pacemaker. Which album? Atom Heart Mother. Yep. What was the title of the 1967 Pink Floyd show at the newly opened Queen Elizabeth Hall in London, billed as Space Age Relaxation for the Climax of Spring? They were subsequently banned from the venue because bubbles from a machine and flowers distributed among the audience stained the carpet and seats. Uh, are you asking what it was called? What was the title of the show? Uh, freak Out Ethel? No, Games for May. Oh. Which song on The Piper at the Gates of Dawn features lyrics that Sid Barrett took from the I Ching, the Chinese book of changes such as All movement is accomplished in six stages and the seventh brings return. Uh, Lucifer Sam? Chapter 24. Marcus, no passes. You've scored five points. <laughs> Someone else go. And our next contender, please. And your name is? Vic Hope. Your occupation? TV and radio presenter. Your chosen charity? A quabba. And your chosen subject? Giraffes. Giraffe in 90 seconds, starting now. A historical name for the giraffe, which appears in its modern scientific name, is a blend of the names of two different animals. One is the camel. What's the other? Leopard. Yep. Giraffes have pairs of hairy, horn-like structures which protrude from the tops of their heads. What formal name, derived partly from the Latin for bone, is given to these structures? Ossicones. Yes. Which subspecies of giraffe, noted for the jagged, irregular spots on its coat, shares its common name with an ethnic group of people who live mainly in Kenya and Tanzania? The Maasai giraffe. Yes. A Canadian zoologist who co-wrote the influential book The Giraffe, Its Biology, Behaviour and Ecology with her colleague Jay Bristol Foster is widely credited as the first scientist to study giraffes in the wild. What's her name? Anna Innes, later Anna Innes Doug. Yes. Giraffes featured in numerous Italian Renaissance artworks after the arrival of a giraffe in Florence in 1487, which caused a sensation. What name after the ruler who received it is usually given to this giraffe? The Medici giraffe. Yeah. Male giraffes curl back their upper lips to open sensory ducts, which allow them to determine whether or not a female is fertile. What German word is used to refer to this behaviour? Flamen. Yeah. The closest living relative of the giraffe, the only other surviving member of the family, Giraffidae, is a forest-dwelling mammal 
animal noted for its striped legs. What's this animal called? A carpy. Yeah. Male giraffes compete for the opportunity to mate by fighting each other using their heads and upper bodies. What name is usually given to this behaviour? Necking. It is. The name of one subspecies of giraffe is derived from the Latin for net because of its distinctive pattern of large brown patches separated by thin lines that resemble a net. Which subspecies? Giraffe reticulata or the reticulated giraffe? Is absolutely correct. No passes, you got them all right. Nine <laughs> points. <laughs> oh, I feel so funny. <laughs> And our next contender, please. And your name is? Bridie Mae Williams. Your occupation? TV presenter. And your chosen charities? Paul's Place and Bristol Mind. And your chosen subject? Uh, 90s and noughties boy bands. Right, starting now. Which British boy band's first television appearance was on The Hitman and Her in 1990, a show on which one band member, Jason Orange, had previously worked as a dancer? Take that. Yep. In 1992, Denise McLean replied to an ad in the Orlando Sentinel searching for male singers that move well. Her son, AJ, became the first member of the resulting group, whose lineup also included Brian, Nick, Kevin and Howie. Which band? Backstreet Boys. Yep. The American boy band LFO, or Light Funky Ones, reached number six in the UK in 2000, with a song inspired by the the actress Jennifer Love Hewitt, who appeared in the video. What's the title of the song? Summer Girls? Girl on TV. Oh. NSYNC released their second album in 2000. The album cover features the band members as puppets because the group had recently cut ties from their manager and record label. What's the title of the album? No strings attached. Yep. In the late 1990s, the American record producer Chris Stokes created a band whose members were known as Amarian, J. Boog, Raz B and Lil Fizz and who referred to themselves as Boys of the New Millennium. Which band? B2K. Yep. The band JLS, or Jack the Lad Swing, rose to prominence after they finished runners-up on The X Factor. Their first single, released in 2009, went straight to number one in the UK. What's the title of it? Oh, pass. <laughs> in 2004, Brian McFadden left Westlife just weeks before the start of their new tour because he wanted to spend more time with his family. What was the name of the tour? Oh, uh, World of Our Own? Turnaround, a chart-topping 2002 album by Blue, includes the number one single, Sorry Seems to Be the Hardest Word, featuring Elton John, who co-wrote the song with Bernie Taupin in the 1970s. What's the title of the album? All Rise? Title is One Love. <laughs> <laughs> And you had one pass. Bryony, the title of that JLS song was Beat Again. Oh. You have, however, four points. OK, thank you. <laughs> and our final contender, please. And your name is... Siobhan McSweeney. Your occupation? Actor. And your chosen charities? The Maya Centre and Abortion Support Network. And your chosen subject? Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder, the American actor, writer, director. His films include Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein and so on. 90 seconds, starting now. Wilder was born in Milwaukee in 1933. He chose the stage name Gene Wilder when he joined Lee Strasberg's Actors Studio in 61. What was his birth name? Silberman. Yeah. After Wilder graduated from university in 1955, he went to England to study at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School. The courses offered included a sport at which he excelled. He won the all-school championship after just six months. What sport? Fencing. Yeah. In 1963, Wilder appeared with Anne Bancroft in a Broadway production of a play by Bertolt Brecht. It was at this time that he met Bancroft's then-boyfriend, Mel Brooks, with whom he'd form a successful creative partnership. What was the title of the play? Mother Courage and Her Children. Yes, Wilder's feature film debut was in the 1967 film Bonnie and Clyde, which stars Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. He plays a man who's kidnapped by the couple. What is his character's name? Pass. Mel Brooks offered Wilder a role in The Producers not long after they first met, when the script was still a work in progress. At that time, it had a different title. What was it? Um... Pass. In Young Frankenstein, Wilder's character Frederick exhibits the creature on stage. After some initial demonstrations, they perform a dance routine to a song written by Irving Berlin. What song? Putting on the Ritz. Yep, Wilder formed a successful on-screen partnership with Richard Pryor. The pair co-starred in four films, including Stir Crazy and See No Evil, Hear No Evil. They first appeared together in a 1976 film directed by Arthur Hiller. What film? Silver Streak. Yeah. In Stir Crazy, Skip Donahue and Harry Monroe, played by Wilder and Pryor, are sent to prison for a crime they didn't commit. They're accused of robbing a bank while dressed as what birds? 
Woodpeckers. Woodpeckers is correct. You had two passes, Siobhan. The title the producers had had was Springtime for Hitler. Ah, Siobhan. <laughs> and uh, Eugene Grizzard was yeah. the uh, character that he played in that uh, Bonnie and Clyde film. You have six points. Thank you. Right, that is the specialist subject round done. Let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place with four points, Bryony. Third place with five points, Marcus. Second place with six points, Siobhan. First place with nine points, Vic. So, now it is the general knowledge round. And if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, there has to be a tie break. So, let's ask Bryony to join us back in the chair, please. And tell us why your life was changed last year. I was on uh, the Great British Bake Off, the Christmas special, um, and I managed to win it, um, which was great. And now I've gone on to be, uh, become a TV presenter with Food Unwrapped on Channel 4. And in spite of a disability that you have. Yeah, absolutely. I was born with no fingers on my left hand, um, and uh, it's just been a great platform for me to raise awareness um, and spread some positivity um, and some representation. And what about Unwrapped? Unwrapped, yes, Food Unwrapped is a great programme. Quite a light-hearted look into where our food comes from. You know, we go into factories, to farms. I've done stories on how you mush mushy peas. But don't you just go... No, you see, you'd think no. that, John, but you actually you explode them with bicarbonate of soda. You explode them? Yes, what, in hot water. Not you each pea a... separately. You each pea separately. You can do it in batches. So it's the science behind it, really. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it's, you know, these questions that you, 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 know, you might think to yourself, but you never know the answer to. So I'm, I'm a fountain of really random knowledge about food now, so... Well, there are worse things to be a fountain of knowledge <laughs> about. Right, you have four points. Uh, let's see how you do with your general knowledge. Two minutes. Here we go. Brogues, platforms and loafers are styles of what items of clothing? Shoe! Yes. The 1991 novel Scarlet by Alexandra Ripley is a sequel to a 1936 novel by Margaret Mitchell. What was the title of Mitchell's work? Uh, uh pass. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world said to have existed in what is now Iraq is known as the Hanging Gardens of... Uh, fruit? Babylon. CO is the chemical formula for a colourless, odourless gas that is poisonous to humans. Which gas? Uh, carbon... Monoxide? Yes. A French term, which means blow or blow of the state, is used in English to refer to a sudden and often violent seizure of power by a small group that includes elements of the military. What term? Coup. Yes. Lolo Rosso and Little Gem are varieties of what leafy salad vegetable? Lettuce. Yes. The city of Ulm in southern Germany is noted as the birthplace of a world-famous physicist. He was born there in 1879, and a street in the city is named after him. What was his name? Uh, pass, sorry. What's the name of the great mouse detective referred to in the UK title of a 1986 Disney film? Danger Mouse? Basil. In August 2020, <laughs> which London-based football club won the FA Cup for a record 14th time when they beat Chelsea 2-1 in the final? Arsenal? Yes, the Dollywood theme park, which opened in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee in 1986, is named after the country music singer who created it. What's his surname? Parton. Yeah. What term from the Greek for living together refers to a close, often mutually beneficial relationship between two species? A cohabitation? Symbiosis. What snack popular in Tex-Mex cooking consists of tortilla chips, typically topped with melted cheese and a chilli sauce? Oh, I can't believe I can't think of this. Nachos? Yes. What's the name of the yellow and brown puppy who's the title character of a series of children's picture books written and illustrated by Eric Hill? The first book was published in 1980. Spot! Yes. U Town is the main settlement on a group of islands off the coast of Cornwall. Which islands? Uh, Guernsey? Silly. In the standard UK version of the board game Scrabble, the letters F, H and Y each have a face value of the same number of points. How many? Six. Four. Oh. Yeah. Two passes. Albert Einstein was the oh. quite famous bloke who was born in <laughs> Ulm. And that novel by Margaret Mitchell was Gone with the Wind. You've now got 12 points. Oh, I'll take that, John. Thank yeah. you very much. Oh. It's right, it's double figures. I'm OK, I'm happy. Oh, I'm so sorry. And now Marcus again, please. Must not be forgotten, Marcus. We have been on a telly show together. It was called I've Never Seen Star Wars. You, oh, you, I haven't you, forgotten, you, John. You, well, neither have I. You made me look not difficult, admittedly, but you did make me look a fool. Now, 
let's not say I made you do anything. Well, you keenly volunteered to I get don't up and moonwalk. <laughs> you moonwalked like an absolute dance hero. I had encouraged you to listen to, I think, Thriller for the first time ever. Yes. And, uh, mm. and then I got you to moonwalk. I thought you were you... great, man. I, I, I genuinely thought at that point a change in career might have just happened for you. But here we all are. I hope it won't affect the standard of questions you're about to ask me. Well, let's put it this way, I discarded the first set. Oh, good, yeah. thank you so much. What about your, um, your own career? I mean, you are doing many things. I like doing as many different things as I can. I, I was lucky enough to play P.T. Barnum in, in Barnum. Yeah. Uh, I got married. Oh. to a comedian, Rachel Paris. It turns out it's very good for you to be married to someone cleverer and more talented than you. It really keeps you on your toes, you know? You're only saying that, aren't you, cos she's watching? No, no, I, I, meant, mean... I meant from her point of view. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> you have five points and two minutes of general knowledge. Coming up now, on a bicycle, the thin metal rods that extend from the centre of a wheel to the outer rim are known by what name? Spokes. Yep. Oh, there was once a swag man camped in the billabong. It's the original first line from an Australian bush ballad written in 1895 by the poet Banjo Patterson. Which ballad? Waltzing Matilda. Yeah. Which planet in our solar system has a diameter of about 7,520 miles and that makes it the closest planet in size to Earth? Uh, uh... Uh, Neptune. Venus. The racehorse who won the Epsom Derby in 1981 was kidnapped almost two years later and was never seen again. What was his name? Shergar. Yeah. The Suffolk farmhouse known as Willie Lott's Cottage appears in several paintings by a British landscape painter who was born in the nearby village of East Burgold in 1776. Which painter? Constable. Yep. One of the major groups of nutrients includes foods such as pasta and potatoes, has a name that's often abbreviated to carbs. What's the name? Carbohydrate. Yep. The original version of a well-known fairy tale was first published in France in 1740 with the title La Belle et la Bête. How is the story known in English? Beauty and the Beast. Yep. Although there are exceptions, a rule for spelling certain words is expressed in the rhyme I before E except after C. Yep. The common name of a flightless bird of the genus Apteryx, native to New Zealand, is also a nickname for a person from New Zealand. What's the bird? Kiwi. Yeah. In which US state are the popular winter sports resorts Vail and Aspen? Uh, uh, Utah. Colorado. Revenge of the Fallen, Dark of the Moon and Age of Extinction are the subtitles of the first three sequels to a 2007 science fiction action film directed by Michael Bay. What film? Avengers. Transformers. The adjective haptic refers to which of the traditional five human senses? Touch. Yes. Fingal of Rarity Wills were the middle names of a famous writer born in Dublin in 1854. Which writer? Uh, Haney. Oscar Wilde. The ninth of Edward Elgar's Enigma variations, often played at funerals and remembrance services, is named after a biblical hunter. Which hunter? Pass. In a British television series of the 1960s, the intelligence agent John Steed is assisted first by Kathy Gale, then Emma Peel, and finally Tara King. What series? Uh... Uh, Avengers. Is absolutely correct, Marcus. One pass. The ninth of Elgar's Enigma variations was Nimrod. And you have now a total of 15 points. All right. And now Siobhan again, please. And, um, you're much less frightening than you appeared to be in Derry Girls, because... Um, Likewise, John. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, what is it about Derry Girls and the part that you play? It is set in a school uh, and centres around... A Catholic girls' school? A Catholic girls' school. Um, I play their principal. I know you would have thought that I played the Catholic school girl, but actually I play Sister Michael and I am the... Uh, the ever-patient headmistress. You, you went to uh, a Catholic girls' school? Did you? I, I went to an all-girls school, but I had no interaction with nuns. I made it all up. Genuine? Yeah, I mean, no, it... the, the, the writer, Lisa McGee, wrote it. It's partly based on her own experiences ah. in school. I mean, you know, very vague references. But there's going to be another series. Yes, there will be. We've had two series already, and uh, we're absolutely dying to get back to it. I look forward to it coming back. Me now too, then. thank you. You have six no, points. No, let's keep talking. <laughs> we're grand. We're grand. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is the rule of this school. <laughs> Do as you're told. Oh, yeah, Sister Humphreys. We have... Sir, we'll do. Don't be formal. <laughs> Don't. Right, you have six points on the board, and the score to beat is 15, if you're to win the trophy. Yeah. Here we go. 
In the words of a well-known saying, which suggests that even the bleaker situation will have a positive side to it, every cloud has a silver... Lining. Yep. What's the first name of the Labour peer, former Home Secretary, Lord Blunkett? Pass. Which small yellow creatures who wear goggles and blue overalls are the title characters of a 2015 film that features the voices of Sandra Bullock and John Hamm, among others. They first appeared in the 2010 film Despicable Me. Minions. Yep. Which song was adopted as the national anthem of France in 1795? It was originally entitled War Song for the Army of the Rhine. I... Sorry, I've, I've only the wrong answer in my head. Which song was adopted as the national pass. anthem of France? Uh, pass. Voyager, Enterprise and Discovery are all spacecraft named in the titles of television series in a long-running science fiction franchise. Which one? Star Trek. Yes. A male badger is known as a boar. What's the name for a female badger? A sow. Yes. What imperial unit of measurement of weight is commonly abbreviated to the letters O-Z? Ants. Yes. Which American actress won an Emmy Award in 2020 for her role in the television drama series Euphoria? She's also starred in the films The Greatest Showman and Spider-Man, Homecoming and its sequel. Pass. The island of Capri, noted for its famous blue grotto, is at the entrance to a bay off the west coast of Italy, which is named after a major city. Which city? Naples. Yes. What's the usual British name for an electric passenger vehicle that runs on rails inlaid into the road? In North America, it's often called a streetcar or trolley car. A tram. Yep. Yeah. The writer Bram Stoker is best remembered for his vampire novel Dracula. What is his name Bram short for? Brambury. Abram. The English pirate Edward Teach, who was captured and killed by a British naval force in 1718, was better known by a nickname that was a reference to the colour of his facial hair. What nickname? Blackbeard. Yep. Which England cricketer was voted the 2019 BBC Sports Personality of the Year? Pass. Ah, oh, well, I can tell you because your time is up. The Ben Stokes is the answer to that. And the other passes... The um, American actress who won the Emmy for her role in Euphoria was Zendaya. Oh. You'll be cross about this yeah. one. The national anthem was the Marseillaise. And uh, Lord Blunkett is actually David Blunkett. And you've got 14 points. Thank you. And finally, Vic, again, please. And, uh, Vic, you do an awful lot now of children's telly. Yeah, so I do How, which is back. It's called How because it's how do you do that, yeah. basically. How, do you do this, how, how, how does do you do that, that happen? And... How does it work? Yeah, the last time it was on TV, it was Fred Dinage and Carol Vorderman, so it's, it's pretty cool to step into Carol Vorderman's shoes. And how have things changed in those years? I've not seen anything as ambitious as what we've tried to do this series for a long time, because I guess there's not as much children's TV around. Mm. There's the internet, there's YouTube and other places, but I'm really glad that we've brought it back. And there's explosions and there's science, and it, it just feels like what it used to be. And I, I, I used to watch it, you know, I used to get up in the mornings with my little brother and we'd wrap ourselves in a duvet, and it feels like that TV again. And the one certainty about kids, the one great thing about kids, is, is curiosity, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's, that's the key to it, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think I've learned a lot from doing it as well. A lot of the science that I've probably not had to touch on since I was back at GCSE level. So I hope that kids are watching it and, and learning a lot, but also being entertained. I mean, there's a lot of gunge. Uh, now, you have nine points. This is where it all so goes wrong. So far, Vic. And the score to beat is old Briggs not there. He's got 15. So, let us see if okay. you can overtake him to win the trophy. Here we go. A common phrase that means good luck exhorts an actor or performer to break a... Leg. Yep, a Punch and Judy show features a character called Toby. What type of creature is Toby? Oh, an elephant. Dog, a rope with a loop at one end used in North America to catch cattle, sometimes called a lariat, but is better known by a name derived from the Latin for noose. What's the name? Lasso. Yep. In September 2020, Tadej Pogacar became the first Slovenian winner of which famous cycle race? Um, Tour de France. Yep. The shipping forecast area in the North Sea, directly between Thames and White, shares its name with a seaport on the English Channel. Which port? Portsmouth? Dover. Pharrell Williams topped the UK singles chart in 2014 with a song that includes the line, clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. What's the title of the song? Happy. Yes. Which element has the atomic number seven and the chemical symbol N? 
Uh, nitrogen? Yep. Which member of the British royal family married the property developer Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi in a private ceremony in Windsor in July 2020? Um, Eugenie? Beatrice. The radio call sign Air Force One is used when the American president's on board the presidential aeroplane. The corresponding radio call sign Marine One is normally used for what other form of transport? A submarine? Helicopter. Oh. <laughs> a variety of pasta in the form of short, narrow tubes has a name that's also used for 18th century British dandies who would imitate continental fashions. What's the name? Penne. Macaroni. Which English city has parliamentary constituencies called Riverside, Walton and Wavertree? A pass. What's the name of the British writer and actress known for her roles in the television series Chewing Gum, Black Earth Rising and I May Destroy You? Michaela Cole. Yes. Do you hear the people sing and bring him home? A song's from what stage musical? Uh, pass. Which Korean martial art was added to the Olympic programme at the Sydney Games in 2000? Judo. Taekwondo. In October 2020, which presenter stepped down after 33 years as one of the hosts of Radio 4's Women's Hour? She'd been created a dame in 2011 for services to broadcasting. Um, Jane Garvey. No, it was Jenny Murray. Of course it was! <laughs> <laughs> you had uh, two passes. The musical with Do You Hear The People Sing and Bring Him Home, that was Les Miserables, and The English City, which has Riverside, Walton, Wavertree, etc. Liverpool. You have 15 points. <laughs> oh boy, that is close. Let's have a look at the final scores. In fourth place, with 12 points, Briony. Third place, with 14 points, Siobhan. In second place, with 15 points and two passes, Vic. In first place with 15 points and one pass, Marcus, which means that he takes home Sorry. the trophy and is tonight's celebrity mastermind. I feel appalling. <laughs> appalling. Appalling after such astonishing knowledge of giraffes and then also, like, that it should go on, on passes. I feel awful. But that's the way it works. Look, I'll take the win. And just one pass in it as well. Anyway, congratulations and uh, you, do not have to be a celebrity to take part in the regular Mastermind programmes. If you'd like to appear in the next series on BBC Two, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind. And you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Either way, do join us again next time for more Masterminds and thanks for watching. Goodbye. Trophy, as soon as I get home, will be mounted on the outside of the front door, hopefully as a sort of knocker, so that anybody arriving at the house would be like, this guy is seriously clever. I bet he didn't win just by having one less pass. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>